Good Wednesday morning. I'm Lindsay Reiser, live from MSNBC headquarters in New York. Right now, we are following breaking news. Another mass shooting. This one in Virginia, where late last night, police say an employee opened fire at a Walmart, killing six people before turning the gun on himself. Police responding within two minutes of the first 911 call. And we are all praying for the family, friends, and co-workers of everyone that's affected by this senseless violence. Your Chesapeake community is here for you and will continue to be here for you during the difficult days, months, and years ahead. We're live on the scene with the very latest on the investigation. And we don't want your prayers. We don't want your sympathy. We don't want you to get on TV and play like you are stupid, that you haven't been aware of all this that's been going on now for the humpteenth time for a great deal of period. We want you to do your jobs. We want the courts to do their jobs. We want this government to acknowledge the fact that it has been a total failure to its own people in providing safety and security to its people because of an event that happened 30 plus years ago that has now put you in the crosshairs. Do you understand? I am per presenting a letter right now to the governments of the law enforcement agencies all over America. Do you understand, first of all, that this black eye has fallen upon to you? Obviously not. Second of all, do you understand where the core of origin began? Right here in Northwest Tennessee. Obviously not. Do you understand that in the eyes of the people, you are looked upon as being fraudulent. You are looked upon as being basically a joke. You're looked upon as being disgraceful because of these events that continue to keep happening again and again and again. The people in Northwest Tennessee and Washington, D.C. that took a part in thinking that they was going to get away with this, beginning with the Reagans and the Bushes, will give an account to the fullest extent of God's holy divine laws pertaining to what that you have done, that even to this day, you're still not willing to mandate, you're still not willing to go back and redo. Just as of yesterday, late yesterday evening, I was in Walmart picking up some medication, when all of a sudden somebody said something to me and I looked around and it was Mr. Tommy Glorious Moore, the judge, a residing judge that has helped to cause this dilemma to happen in our families towards the death of a 51-year-old brother. They still act like it's nonchalant. They still act like that nothing is occurring. We know what's occurring. You have been cursed. Do you know why you have been cursed? Do you know who has cursed you? Do you know the ground principles in behind why this is happening? Now, they can dismiss what I'm talking about and say, well, this guy is a freaking rattling lunatic. This guy is a madman. He's obviously got some sort of mental illness. Uh, beginning all the way back in 1983, whenever he was first uh, attacked by a demon, and he reached out for the authorities towards wanting help, and the type of help that I got was being marked. From that moment on, from 1983, this government has failed its people. And why the people play in towards this savagery, embarrassing um, events towards going to these election booths and standing, some of them, for hours and hours and hours, hoping and praying to God that something's going to change. We're going to be able to get a toehold on all this. And every election, in every year, regardless of what body is in power, it turns out to be a mockery. My brother and I 
decided in 20 and 14, whenever I come out here, to put a cross, to put a cross up on this property, representing the fact that the system pertaining to the law enforcement system, pertaining to our courts, pertaining to the way that we handle our affairs is broken. And if you can't understand that by now, in walking off into the latter part of 2022, right here at Thanksgiving, it's very obvious that we are, in fact, dealing with a group of people that is insane. Because even a great deal of your alcohol anonymous programs and your drug anonymous programs will tell you that it is a sign of insanity to continue to keep doing the same thing again and again and again, but expecting different results. Until America is willing to stand up in acknowledging what has occurred here going back into the late 1980s, in nine tapes going to the White House, you will see more bloodshed that will come upon to this great nation like you've never seen before. And it will be nothing but a mockery in the eyes of the people pertaining to how that the law enforcement has let the people down. I had a great grandfather that partaken in the system in the early 1900s, right before right before the 1929 collapse or the Depression hit. People thought that he was too harsh. People turned on him because of his work that he had performed for the will of the people. He wasn't doing that because he wanted to do that. He wasn't doing those things because that was what he desired to do. He done that because that was what was required for him to do. Since then, we have seen our laws be compromised, be compromised, be compromised to the point that now we are turned into this mockery. I just put out material yesterday in making references to the fact that the individual in the Q Club in Colorado Springs, which I've got some friends in Colorado Springs, I don't think that they're uh, I don't think that they have an alternative lifestyle like, like the LGBTQ community has, but they do live there. I've been to Colorado Springs, been to Col lived in Colorado three, di three, three different times that I know of. Anyways, this individual that was in there that was military trained, thank God for it, rather than him buckle, rather than him cower, rather than him run, from the incident that happened in that club, he actually went towards the fire rather than running from the fire. Well, that's what you're supposed to do if you're a good Samaritan, regardless whether you have military training or not. You're not supposed to cow. You're not supposed to run. You're not supposed to forfeit your responsibilities like the cops did down there in Texas where an individual went into a school and went on a rampage. These are all the events that is occurring and has occurred towards various attorneys and doctors that have went in and compromised our way of thinking and compromised our way of doing to the degree that now our laws has turned into nothing but a mockery, a joke. And if the truth be known, something really ticked that guy off because he was probably being made fun of. They was probably provoking him in some way. And, and you know, I, I want to bring up the fact that what the individual done yesterday, uh, day before yesterday or whenever it was, whenever the, whenever the uh, uh, LGBTQ uh, community uh, got attacked, uh, society's finally opening up their eyes and realizing that that guy should actually be treated as a hero, which he should. But I guarantee you, if David Jeffrey Jackson, my brother, or Dennis James Jackson that lives at either 291 Thompson Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 3255, or 430 Beach Grove Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 3255, if either one of us 
would have initiated any type of violence like the guy did towards taking them people down, we would have been looked upon as being the perpetrators that was causing the problem versus us being the victims. The law enforcement in Weekly County and in O'Brien County and in Tennessee has made a mockery out of themselves pertaining to their governors, their mayors, their uh, state officials, their county representatives, their state representatives, their judges, their DAs, all the above. Anything associated with law needs to be immediately fired, made fun of. They need to go out there with some sort of deal in front of their courthouses and, and literally maybe make a scarecrow or something, I don't know, and, and show them that what they are is a joke. Because they punish the innocent and let the guilty go. It is a corrupt system. And like I said a while ago, your doctors, your psychiatrist has had a big influence in doing this, and your liberal conservative attorneys has had a big difference, has caused a great deal of this, because we have become a nation now that has become so lax whenever it comes to punishing people, now people think that they can do this, and and rather not there's any true consequences in behind it or not, they don't care. They don't care. Evil has befallen upon to the land. Sickness, great sickness has befallen upon to the land. Great fear has fallen upon to the land. And this was things that we didn't have to deal with that I remember whenever I was a child growing up in the 60s, 70s, and even throughout the majority of the 80s. We have let all this stuff creep into our lives pertaining to Halloween, paranormal behavior, uh, we've made all these videos and all these movies and we get entertained by all this blood that Hollywood keeps putting out there uh, of gory movies, gory bloody movies. That's what that's what excites us now. That that's what excites us. It's we're no longer excited by by uh, uh, movies that, that used to have good meaning to them. Andy Griffith was one of them that had a good meaning to it. Um, there was other movies, good good cop movies, good investigating uh, detective movies. Cannon was one of them. Um, I could I could go on and on with with various movies that had good meanings to them. Towards the good guy was working for the weakness of society, but they kept society in check. Society's no longer being in check. Society is no longer being in check. You have been cursed. Now you need to figure out who cursed you and why they cursed you. And now you need to try to, to reverse that before it's too late. Because I guarantee you, whenever enough of this goes on, in the eyes of, of God, he will, he will basically look down upon the society the same way that he did during the Great Flood or during other major events and say, you know what? You're right. They're beyond repair. They have reached the point of doom. And at that point in time will be whenever God the Father will come back in great fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God, and upon them that do not practice justice, and upon them that do not acknowledge God towards him being God. He will come back in great fire. He will gather up what few Christians are left here, the true Christians, and he will burn down everything down upon to the ground, including the very building that you're looking at right there. Anything that is within that building that is burnable will burn. And man, you talk about a burn. You talk about getting all that material inside that building right there burning, and you literally, probably literally melt, melt the beams uh, that hold that building together and, and bust the cinder blocks of the walls. That's how much material that they have in that building. And if you have all the buildings throughout the whole planet doing that at one time, 
you're not going to be able to call upon the fire department or the first responders to help you because there will be too much. It will be houses. It will be homes. It will be businesses. It will be anything that is burnable, according to the way that I interpret the King James, whenever God comes back in flaming fire. And that's what you're playing with. You're not just playing with our lives towards not doing your jobs effectively and efficiently the way that the courts used to do their jobs back. Yes, I'm going to use my grandfather as an example in the early 1900s. And if you can't do your jobs, and if you can't professionally get people in there that will do their jobs, maybe it's time that there was an uprising here in America to the degree that the people took over these positions and these people that's in these departments because they're obviously not doing their jobs. You would think that, you know, one event after another event after another event that somebody would have done already hammered this towards putting their foot down towards towards what type of embarrassment that, that America and America's laws has turned out to be. Well, it's pretty obvious that the statement that my brother and I, David Jeffrey Jackson, was making to this particular neighborhood was ignored whenever we first put the cross up in 20 and 14, and eight years later, it's still being ignored. It's still being ignored. You still got people that make fun and make mockery and, and demonize and dehumanize the fact of the way this building out here looks and what I stand for. Well, you know, that demonizing and that humiliation can actually go two different ways, okay? And whenever it comes to seeing this bloodshed only intensify on the level that, that it is, has intensified, you, that you, you have to be able to logically look at the facts. The proof is in the pudding is that where has our society broken down to the degree that now we are seeing this and experiencing this almost on a every day to day level. And if it's not happening in one form, it's happening in another. I mean, just the other day, I picked up on some information that happened this past weekend in Memphis, where I think about 20, 25 people went into some sort of a department store and just basically went in there and made themselves at home and walked out with thousands and thousands of dollars worth of, worth of merchandise. Well, if you was working in that department store and you was a department store worker or clerk or whatever, stalker, whatever, do you want to jeopardize your life for some coats and some rings and some jewelry and some whatever else that they took a part of towards jerking out of there? Do you want to take a part in endangering or jeopardizing your life to stop these people from attacking the conglomerates towards stealing all that merchandise out of the Walmart or whatever retail store that they was at? In Memphis, I don't know for sure if it was Walmart or where, but would you would you be willing to lay down your life for that type of merchandise? That's what I'm talking about. Our law enforcement agencies, our courts, our probation officers, beginning at the top, beginning with the FBI, ATF, United States Marshals, Homeland Security, Secret Service, all this stuff trickles down. You know, they claim that uh, crap basically rolls from the uphill downhill. Starts at the top and it goes down. Well, this is what we're seeing and this is why we're seeing it. I hate to get upset this close to Thanksgiving in seeing all this violence, but this is not the same country in the same world that I was adapted to whenever I was a child growing up. Yeah, there was some cuckoos out there whenever I was growing up. There was some mean, mean hombres out there that didn't mind uh, bashing people's heads in, that the cops basically had to bash their heads in, uh, you know, kind of like a, 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 the only way to, to defeat a bad person with a gun is a good person with a gun. Well, whenever you no longer have the good people that's willing to use the guns, kind of like the people down there in Texas in that school, well, then you got a mockery. Whenever you no longer have judges that's willing to put people in behind bars and keep them in behind bars, 
that's this violent, then you got a mockery. When you have judges like the judges here in Weekly County that allowed for my brother to be attacked on his own property and then would not stand in behind our complaints after calling the sheriff's department almost twice every month for three consecutive solid years and went to court, hired attorneys, and still couldn't get nothing done, now you have a mockery. So Tommy Moore that meets me in aisle five or in front of the Walmart building or there in Walmart or wherever he meets me at, he can play it off all he wants. Like all this is some sort of a big joke. But I got news for Tommy Moore. I got news for Mr. Pence and any other law enforcement agency in America. Because you have not done your jobs. And because you have made a mockery out of our courts, you will stand and give an account for the things that you have done just as much as the things that you have not done in the eyes of God Almighty. And you may be saying, oh, I just fear and tremble. I just fear and tremble. That's just it. We have a society over here that's been given over to a reprobate mind, and they don't fear God. They don't fear the ramifications of God. They don't fear the consequences in breaking the rules of God. And because of it, it's basically a, I hate to use the word cluster, you know what, but that's basically what it is. It's a, it's a freak show. It's, it's a wild, wild west uh, anarchy. Uh, it's a circus. And you wonder any given time, when is the, when is the two-headed calf or the bearded lady going to come out in, in, uh, in, all this, in all this chaos? And that's exactly what it's turned into, nothing but chaos here in America. And it's just one raging disgraceful event after another that just absolutely makes me want to tear up and cry, but, you know, tearing up and cry at this particular moment ain't going to do no good. You know what tearing up and crying is going to do to this community around here for the, for the majority of the part, maybe not all of them, but a great deal of them, they'll be entertained by it. Just like they was entertained by me and David being crucified, being attacked, being hunted, being humiliated, being demonized and dehumanized on an open level for three solid consecutive years until finally my brother could not take it no longer. That's what these people brought up onto our family, and that's what the courts brought up onto our family. And what you're seeing right now is the essence, the very essence of the failure of our law enforcement judicial system. And it's a mockery. And it's a sick one. And to think that our country has not stood up yet against this type of approach. Just like the Bible talks about, for your house has been left desolate. You know, our country used to believe in God. It stood for God. It stood for godly people and godly manners. And we hired people that didn't want to act godly, that wanted to attack the godly, that they suffered a great punishment because of them taking advantage of the godly. Now, the very system itself takes advantage of the godly or allows for the godly to be taken advantage of. And because of it, now the stain of mockery has been reversed to the point that now they deserve to be humiliated. They deserve to be made a mockery out of. They deserve to be laughed at completely out of their black robes and their courts and their political systems where they basically just get on TV and showboat and argue and bicker and argue and bicker. And rather than getting up there working for we the people, in actuality, in behind the closed doors and in behind the scenes, they're working for themselves. Because how many of them do you know of that goes to work for the people that at the end of their term, comes out like like a like a bandit 
towards they made the right connections with the right people and now they're making money money uh, hand over fist and man are they ever feeding themselves and feeding their own enterprises it's a mockery every time we see this type of bloodshed come up onto our TV screens is another signature signification that our judicial system, our law enforcement agencies here in America have failed. The system has failed. That was the primary purpose for my brother and I putting up a broken cross up here and laying it to its side and not properly putting it up where it should go. We know how a cross should stand. We're not that bleak. We done what we done out here intentionally on putting the cross in a broken position because the cross in actuality represents the system of punishment as much, if not more, than what actually happened on the cross. We realize what happened on the cross was a very, very crucial, historical, um, graceful thing pertaining to how that they persecuted a man that shouldn't have never been persecuted to death on that cross. We realize because that man died for our sins and rose on the third day that that's the only way that we believe here at 291 Thompson Road or 430 Beach Grove Road that did believe uh, that that is and was and still is the only way for a person to enter into the kingdom of God is through the bloodshed and the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't don't misrepresent yourselves and how that you're interpreting me because we know just exactly what the cross done the day that the Lord was placed on the cross. What you're not looking at is the cross represented the system, the Roman Empire Im, Imperial Empire system at that time that they used that cross for a punishing tool to maintain law and order. Just like we're supposed to use the electric chair or we're supposed to use hanging or we're supposed to use legal injection towards representing the penalty of capital punishment pertaining to people that deserve that type of punishment. Well, whenever your system is broken to the point that now you don't use any, none of the above, you don't use the cross, you don't use hanging methods, you don't use gas chambers, you don't use electric chairs, and you don't use legal injections. Now you have a broken system. And like I said, I don't know what all happened in this event, but most people that's trying to work and make a buck for themselves has some sort of, you know, some sort of policies or some sort of, of uh, morals. And for a person to walk in to the break area and go to shooting, there there is a story in behind this story that probably we the people will never hear of. And if the truth be known, probably over half of this stuff that goes on was provoked in some sort of way. Like I said a while ago, if I or my brother David would have allowed for any of these people around here to have provoked us to the measure that we took the law into our own hands, we would have basically been shooting ourselves entirely in the foot because of this crooked, mixed up, messed up, broken law enforcement, dilapidated, worthless system. And if you don't believe me, let's watch the rest of this, please. ...and what President Biden is now saying. The shooting happening just days after the deadly mass shooting in a Colorado Springs LGBTQ nightclub over the weekend. The suspect in that shooting is set to make a first court appearance virtually in about two and a half hours. And right now we're learning more about the suspect, including details of a... Na and this is something else that I don't understand. How come... A person that has that many witnesses that is probably on video I'm, I'm using this LGBTQ 
uh, incident, for an example. How come that is so cut and dry towards knowing that that individual done what that individual done? And how come our courts is so broken that we'll go through all this BS? They just had a big court deal of somebody that done basically the same thing. I don't forgot now which incident it was because we have so many now. But he basically said in court, after the courts basically did not give him the death sentence, even though he wanted a death sentence, but he basically sat there in court after about two years that was only making a mockery out of the people's death that he took that day of illegitimately. I'm telling you, our system is a complete, total mockery. You have been cursed. Now you need to understand you have been cursed. Now you need to understand why that you have been cursed, beginning with the Reagans and the Bushes. Now you under now you need to understand who has cursed you. Because no witch or warlock, no demonic substance upon this planet can bring forth a curse. That was proven whenever Jesus Christ was walking amongst us, whenever he cursed the fig tree. And the only reason why he'd done that is because to prove that his abilities, that he could do just as much bad or wrong in the eyes of the people by cursing the fig tree as it was towards doing good. Well, they didn't acknowledge his good. They didn't reward him for his good. A matter of fact, if anything, they... They punished him for his good because even Jesus asked them during the time that they already roughed him up. Uh, Jesus looked at him and said, for what good work does thou persecute me for? And they thought for a second, hmm, that's kind of a trick question, isn't it? And then they come back and said, well, for a good work, we persecute you not. But for you claiming to be something that we know that you're not, towards being a blasphemer, that's why we're going to put you to death. Well, even if he was a blasphemer, even if he did claim to be God Almighty, that still didn't validate towards killing the man in which he wasn't just pretending to be God. He actually was God. He was God in the living flesh. And if anybody was committing blasphemy that day. It was the people that was acting like that they was holier than thou, pertaining to the priest and the rabbis and the holy men and their system that they allowed to go after a person that didn't deserve this type of punishment. That was the beginning phases of a broken system. The system that had been broken. Why? because it was punishing innocent lives. And that has went on throughout society, all throughout history. And if you don't believe me, all you got to do is look at all the people that's been freed for the past 20 plus years here in America that was accused of committing a crime that now has been proven that they never committed that crime. So you can't tell me that this system is not pervertibly messed up and broken. It's broken to the T that now these same people that we pay to protect us and take care of us can't even protect themselves. They have turned into a mockery. They want to go after the innocent, but basically let the guilty go. And that's not what the system is supposed to be about. The system is supposed to be about justice, not injustice. Team change years ago that may have obscured a troubled background. And this footnote in new defense court filings clarifying the suspect is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. Meanwhile, the heroic army veteran credited with stopping the shooter and saving lives sits down one-on-one -on -one with NBC News. My whole family was in there. Who's not going to go save them? Or do what they can to stop somebody from hurting them? 
If somebody, somebody's working their kids down the street and something's about to happen to them, they're gonna jump in front of their kid. That's what I did. We start with the breaking news in Virginia and that deadly shooting at a Walmart. NBC's Cal Perry is on the scene for us in Chesapeake, and I'm also joined by Clint Watts, former FBI special agent and an MSNBC national security analyst. Cal, we learned a lot more from police this morning, including confirmation that the suspect was an employee. They don't have a motive yet. What more are you learning? Yeah, so look, a senior law enforcement official telling NBC separately from that press conference that we heard over an hour ago uh, that this was a disgruntled former employee, or a disgruntled employee, I should say. So somebody who worked in the Walmart behind me. Now, the details on whether or not this person was on shift or not are still unclear. We know that it was a male, the shooter, and that he used a handgun. At least seven people dead, including the shooter. Police saying last night that they did not fire a shot. Now, the investigation will bear out whether or not that is true, but early in indications are that the shooter took his own life. There are at least four people, Lindsay, wounded in hospitals right now. They are going to be key to any kind of investigation, especially when it comes to motive. We still do not know the motive. And as you said, the president of the United States weighing in a short time ago, calling it a tragedy and adding, and I think we have a full screen we can put up, quote, this year I signed the most significant gun reform in a generation, but that is not yearly enough. We must take greater action. We are grateful for the first responders who mobilized to assist victims, and I have directed federal officials to provide any support and assistance needed to the people of Chesapeake. I can say See, that's after the fact. Every time there's a major event like this, he usually talk, speaks up, and he talks about something, and he goes to patting people on the back, kind of like the governor that was patting the people on the back, pertaining to the school shooting down there in Texas, and come to find out that they waited for over an hour before anybody ever pursued going after that guy. Has as as the governor of the state of Texas has he been has he been um, made a mockery of to the degree that he had to sit down, that he has lost his position as as far as being governor. Probably not. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that he had. The whole system is a sham. Just like these words that he's saying right here. Oh, yeah, we know that's a, that it's a tragedy. You don't have to tell us what we already know, Mr. President. That's kind of like if a storm comes in here. We don't have to pay a meteorologist $100,000 a year just to tell us, oh, we had a rain. Well, we know it had a, we, we had a rain. We ain't worried about the rain. We're worried about an oncoming uh, tornado. We're worried about getting warnings and advisories ahead of time to prevent from us dying because of the rain or because of the storm. That's where they are failing the American people. And they've been failing the American people now for quite some time. And it doesn't matter what administration that you put in power at this particular point in time. It don't matter if it's Republican or Democrat. They're all making a mockery out of the original intent of the system. The system was set up to protect lives and to make our environment a safe and productive one. Our environment has not been a safe and productive environment. I hate to say it, but ever since I put out that advisory in 2005 to the 43rd President of the United States, we have seen matters only intensify in, in areas like you could not even begin to imagine. And you got all these problems with, with all this mental, they, they call it mental problems. And, and if the truth be known, it's not a mental problem. It's where somebody allowed for a demonic entity to enter into their heart and to enter into their minds and to enter into their body and basically took over their body. And they went out into a rage. They snapped and they basically formulated chaos. You can look at it from a psychological point pertaining to the mental health communities, but as far as I'm concerned, it was the mental health communities that has helped to put us where we are right now in this state of danger. Danger! Danger! Remember the movie back years ago with the little robot and the little boy? Every time the robot would detect danger, he would go to... Uh, 
uh, rearing up, and he would go to saying, danger, danger, danger. Remember that movie? Well, we've been in danger now for years, and it's only getting worse. We don't need somebody to tell us after a tornado is hit. We need somebody to tell us before the tornado hits that the tornado's coming. The system, the government, has made a mockery out of itself. And until we, the people, are willing to pick it up and stop it, intervene, even if it means a, 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 a takeover, a complete overtake of what's going on here. Because I guarantee you, the day whenever the pilgrims come over to America in regards towards Thanksgiving that we're fixing to celebrate tomorrow, yes, there was there were scursions. Yes, there was problems between this group of people and that group of people, but it didn't happen among ourselves or among themselves. And if it did, guess what? The chief that was called the chief, he put an end to it real quick. Real quick, because they demanded order in their tribal communities. If you want to go out and fight the bad guy, that's one thing. Or the guy that's trying to, you know, bring harm and hurt into into the into the territory or into the tribal people's lives. That's one thing. But you didn't have this going on amongst the tribal people. I still don't understand how come we claim to be a just global society, but yet now we're sitting back and watching poisonous Putin over in Russia do what he's done that's basically going to bring destruction into millions of people's lives this winter because of him attacking their their uh, electrical grid system and their and their gas and the way that they're going to have to uh, provide heat for one another towards people basically freezing to death or starving to death over in the Ukraine area. I still don't understand how come the global society, regardless whether it's the UN or America or whoever, still has not stood up against this type of unjustness, injusticeness-ism. And the only thing that I can think of is that our supposedly judicial justice systems are just as corrupt as the very person that's committing the crimes because they haven't stopped the individual from committing the crimes, and he's doing it right in front of their very noses. Just like what's going on right here in America. Doing it right in front of their very noses. And you still want to get in front of a camera and tell me how proud you are? How good of a job that you're doing? What the hell has happened to you, man? Can't you see the destruction that you have brought up onto your own society? I think I can say behind me, we've already seen both the FBI and the ATF on the scene. They are combing through the parking lot. There were a number of vehicles left here last night. Not surprising to Lindsay, this shooting taking place at about 10.15 p.m., two days before Thanksgiving, 45 minutes before the Walmart closed. So it was very busy and silent. Yeah, people just rush in to get some last-minute items for their Thanksgiving table. Clint, if you're an investigator on this case and you have a disgruntled employee shooting up a workplace on a busy shopping week, where do you focus the investigation? The, the, the main focus, I think, at the, uh, the time of an incident like this is to make sure that it's not connected to any other activity or part of a broader plot. I'm sure that's where they're looking today just to try and get a handle on that and make sure. The broader prop plot is the government ain't doing its damn job. There's the plot. The plot is that our courts has been made a mockery of, and people think that they can do these things and basically get away with it, or they think that they can do these things and only suffer minor consequences on account of it. And until our courts, and until our judges, and until our law enforcement agencies can have the power to redeem its own people, pertaining to these injustices that are happening up onto our streets right now, we, the people, are only going to suffer immensely every 
cotton picking day. And if we're not suffering directly, we're suffering indirectly because of the people that watches this, just like myself, it scars them emotionally. Some people, a little more so than others. Some people, it scars them so badly that they can't even sleep good at night because they're afraid to go outside, afraid some kind of event like this is going to happen to them. That's how bad that it has a psychological effect on people because of them seeing this almost every day now of some sort of massive shooting. And to think that these people can even have the vendacity to get on national TV or get in front of a camera and tell us and brag about different things. My friend, you need to go get you another job somewhere. I realize that whenever the turn of the century occurred in 1900 after World War I, the Americans started looking at things because of the Europeans in a different perspective that now we're going to handle our affairs a little differently. I understand the reason why that they quit having public executions is because so many people was being entertained by executions. They was literally feeding off of other people's miseries. Okay? So they stopped having open public executions. But now they've stopped almost all of the executions. What did Christ say? Christ said that if the blind lead the blind, they shall both lead it off into the ditch. What else did Christ say? Christ said that if the salt has lost its potency pertaining to the gospel, that you just as well take it and throw it on the ground and trample it on the ground by the foot of man. These are the teachings of Christ that told us these things ahead of time. Jesus knew just exactly what he was going up against when he was going up against it pertaining to the centurion Roman government, that empire. He knew the forces obey. He knew it. Just like he also knew that they wasn't paying any attention to him whenever he went up into the mountain and said <clears throat> what he said about Jerusalem, gathering Jerusalem like a like a hen would gather her chicks and she would not listen she would not listen just like she did not listen <coughs> to the warnings going out through Sodom and Gomorrah just like they didn't listen pertaining to the warnings that was given to society during the great flood and they're not listening now they're not listening now so the only thing that I know to do is put out good sound judgment warnings of telling my people, anybody that gets a hold of this material, to get ready because God's fixing to drag us out of here. And whenever he drags us out of here, that's whenever all hell will break loose upon this planet like this planet has never seen before. They think that they're going through harshness right now pertaining to COVID and the war with Ukraine and 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 various supply chain issues and, and prices going up with the fuel and prices going up with this and prices going They ain't seen hard times yet. This is a walk in the park compared to what's fixing to happen whenever God the Father comes back and burns this thing down to the ground. You talk about suffering. We don't even know the, the, the definition of suffering yet compared to what he's going to do to this planet if we don't awaken, if we don't start listening to the messengers, the teachers, the preachers, the prophets. If we don't awaken, it's going to be coming near a neighborhood near you, just like the message that I put out yesterday. That it's one thing to know the difference between right and wrong, and it's another thing to live by the right versus the wrong, because these are no longer suggestions coming from the Bible, but requirements. And whenever you're not willing, according to the requirements coming from the Bible, there is severe consequences that falls behind that disobedience.
It has always been that way since the beginning of time, throughout other cultures, throughout other generations. And if we think that we are above and beyond that, if we think that we are exclusive from that, from some kind of delusional, delirious thinking, we're only deceiving ourselves, my friends, because I promise you, this is coming near a neighborhood near you. And if you don't believe me, you just hang around for a few more days the way that we're going in the wrong direction, and it's going to pop, and whenever it does, it will be like any other event that's ever hit the planet Earth, and that includes the meteors, that includes the wars, that includes the plagues, that includes all the above. That includes all the above. And that's the, that's the only advice that I can give people is to prepare. Just like whenever Moses told his people to put the blood on the front of your doors, uh, that maybe, pray to God, that the death angel will, uh, will go over your house, spare your home, spare the people in your home. It sort of uncovered lead has been covered just to prevent any further violence. Beyond that, they're going to be looking to figure out what was the motive of this. And then the third part, which is which time and time again is how did this person uh, get a hold of a weapon? Was it legally purchased and acquired or did it come from some other means? In this case, what, what I think is just extra pointed, uh, you know, uh, as we look into the Thanksgiving holidays, we've had a stretch of several weeks now with mass shootings in many different locations and for different reasons. Uh, this appears, at least from what we know so far, based on what Cal is reporting, that it was somebody who knew the target and the target area. They, they may have known some of the targets that they were striking. Uh, that is also very similar to what we saw with the University of Virginia just a few weeks ago. Add to that what this terrible massacre that we saw in Colorado Springs. It is a very uh, tough time in America right now, and um, I think everyone is very worried about when does the contagion effect stop? Uh, should we expect to see more of these sorts of attacks? When we see one, we oftentimes see a spate of them over several days and weeks. It has become contagious. It's become very contagious. Once more, these people in this area didn't want to support peace. They didn't want to support a ministry that supported peace. They'd rather have turned their back on the founder of the ministry or degraded or demoralized that person. Okay. They didn't want peace. They wanted what they got. So now they're getting what they, what they wanted. They wanted what they got. Now they're getting what they wanted. That's exactly what's happened here. Exactly. Because anytime you've got a government that's willing to intervene in a ministry, towards confiscating something from that ministry that they never should have confiscated. You got a government that's now creating malice according to their own constitution. And whenever you have a government that has lied routinely about various things that's went on in not only my life, but in so many other innocent people's lives, you got a government that's out of control. It is contagious, and it's only getting worse, and it's only a fulfillment of that in which what I had already done put out an advisory to that was misrepresented, misinterpreted in 2005 up in Davidson County towards a bloody road ahead. Now, if that's the position that the people in America wants to take, continue to keep doing the same thing and you will get the exact same results. That, my friend, is the gospel. Said, um, people are watching right now, and, and they're thinking, another one. I mean, there have been 606 mass shootings in the U.S. so far this year. That's according to the Gun Violence Archive. Um, the fact that this happened so soon after the shooting in Colorado Springs, which we're going to talk about in a moment, what else goes through your mind in your years of law enforcement? Yeah, I think the big thing that keeps coming back is when you see one attack, it oftentimes just inspires people, regardless of their motive, 
if they've been considering an attack, that they may do something similar. It, 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 the idea may have already been there when they see a successful attack, they then uh, try and move to the next step. And that might be to do an attack themselves. I think that's what really- And that's exactly what the law enforcement in this area wanted either my brother or myself to do. That way we would shoot ourselves in the foot. They wanted us to go on an attack. And rather than go on attack, I went up into the woods and I prayed for God to vindicate the injustice that happened in my lives. I was smart enough to refrain from that, even though the thought may have come into my mind at different levels pertaining to various people that was bringing this type of terrorizing torment into our lives. I just had to grit my teeth, clench my hands, and pray to God, Lord, be merciful unto me. Lord, be merciful unto me. God, you said that you would protect me. You said that you would stick closer than a brother. God, I'm going to have to leave it with you towards you protecting me because I know that the courts <clears throat> and the law enforcement agencies here in America is not going to do it for me. And whenever certain people started dropping like flies around here or started having massive heart attacks or strokes, running into trees, are poisoning themselves to the degree that they was having uh, drug overdoses, or they themselves was pointing guns to in, uh, and pulling the triggers, whenever they finally figured out that, hey, maybe we might ought to leave 291 alone down there. And it finally stopped after the death of not only my brother, but the death of certain other people around here that died along with him because of natural occurrences, they call it. Well, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I call it the wrath of God falling upon to these people that done that. And as far as I'm concerned, people that is involved with the court systems, regardless whether they're judges or mayors or governors or whoever pretending to our politics, God's letting them live for a reason. You know why? I hope they live a good, long, healthy uh luxurious luxurious life i don't wish no no harm upon these people you know why because i want these people to be the last one standing that way whenever god comes back and does what he's going to do they'll enact a new system pertaining to the mark of the beast and they will be the very ones that will take the mark of the beast or their children will take the mark of the beast and we see according to the bible where that's all going to lead towards them begging and crying to want to die and death will literally flee from them. Once more, justice is mine, saith the Lord. Justice is mine, saith the Lord. And that's exactly where I left it and that's exactly where I'm going to continue to leave it. In the meantime, I'm going to make film after video after video. We're going to watch more events and I'm going to continue to tell these people what that they have been barked up in, that they're going to give an account for it. They're going to give an account for it. And if they don't give an account for it in this lifetime, I promise you they will give an account for it in the lifetime to come, beginning right across the bottom in Kenton, Tennessee, of a group of people that thought that they was going to do something and get away with it. And then it spread. Then it spread over here to Weekly County. Then it spread over into Kentucky. Then it spread over into Oklahoma in my particular per personal life. It almost spread over into the Atlanta region pertaining to the GBI. Uh, fortunately, I got out of there before they uh, conjured up some sort of or cooked up some sort of uh, entrapment deal like they was cooking up right here in Weekly County. Uh, towards my brother and I being concerned about three innocent children that lived across the road. But yeah, it's coming. True justice is coming. And it's coming near a neighborhood near you. And if it don't come in one form or fashion, it will come in another. And we have no one to blame but ourselves if we're not willing to stand up, even in the format of a total takeover towards Obviously, our systems and our courts and our lawyers and our judges is, is so 
mentally deranged or possessed with devils that they don't know. Oh, yeah, they do know. The majority of them know what they're doing. You know, just like Tommy Moore greeting me uh, uh, last night in Walmart and him acting all hunky-dory and, and, and acting like wasn't nothing wrong. Do you not think that I know that what he was doing, he was playing it off? Because as much material that I have put out here about this judge in Weekly County, he's bound to have gotten a hold of some of it. Did he address me that way last night whenever he seen me? No. It was all giggles and sniggles and, and bubbles and laughter and how you doing, old friend? Uh-huh really troubles me in this. We've seen it in terrorism. We've seen it in mass shootings. We've seen it in one-to-one -one, uh, killings for personal motives. Of Must not trouble you too bad. You're still allowing it to happen. Places uh, or, or at universities and schools. So that's what I'm worried about. I think at this point is we're, we're in that pattern, which is, um, you know, are we going to see more of this kind of activity? And when we get several of these in a row. Are we going to see more? Is that what this idiot just said? Was that a question or a reference to a question? Are we going to see more? Hello? What does the Bible say? The Bible says that as we shall see the days approaching, that no flesh shall be saved. Well, if you'll com compile that and compound that with biblical Bible prophecy, you do your own thinking. You let your fingers do the walking towards what environment that we're walking off into. That could have been stopped. We could all right now be living in a temporary utopia pertaining to a revival that would elevate into a revolution. But that's not what the Bushes and, and the Reagans wanted. That's not what the White House wanted in the late 80s. They wanted to do it their way. That obviously a great deal of people around here supported that. That has jeopardized our safety and our prosperity. How do we make sure that law enforcement is up on their feet and can accurately and effectively try and mitigate some attacks? I think there's even evidence out, you know, even from the New York Times this morning that some attacks have been foiled. So we're in this very dangerous period, I think, in the country. You think? Do you think? Do you think? Is that what you're thinking? And we're paying you how much money to get on TV and tell us what you're thinking. And you think that we're in a dangerous period. How idiotic is that? These people have lost their freaking minds getting up there telling us this stuff. And the American people eats it up hook, line, and sinker because this is the stuff that the media promotes. They want us to be blinded. They want us to suffer. They want us to go through endless pain. If they didn't, they would have already stopped it. They would have already addressed it in the proper form, the same way that my great-grandfather did in the early 1900s. That's what they would have done. They don't want to do that because they've turned it into a game. It's it's uh it's entertaining for a lot of them. Uh, it's a it's a money racket pertaining to the courts and and the judicial system towards the lawyers get their money and you know and the sheriff's office get their money and they get so much money to to house inmates and it's all about money. It ain't about justice. It's a game and it's a very very wicked demonic game. And if you can't see through this, my friends, you're probably part of the problem rather than part of the solution to the problem. And that didn't cost you a dime. And if you're not willing to uh, support the man of God pertaining to the, to the messenger that's bringing forth the message, that's fine too. Continue to keep ignoring me. You know, I was accused back Back whenever I first started all this in 1993, working for the Smiths, working for the uh, 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 Jerry, uh, 
I said Smiths. Um, yeah, Tony Smith and, and Jerry Smith over in, over in Milan, Tennessee. I was accused of trying to force this down their throats and force it down the church's throats pertaining to my message. That's what I was accused of, along with many other things. Being a celebrity hound, being a loco, being a nut, being a liar. Uh, I could go on and on of the, of the false accusations that I was accused of. So now, about 30 years later, since 1993, now I can honestly say, okay, you didn't want to accept the message that I had to preach. You didn't want to support the windmill ministries and the things that I was telling you. So ultimately, now you're going to force, be forced down your throat of now the things that are occurring on a day-to-day, -day, everyday level that are happening now to not just yourselves, but your children and your children's children and possibly even your children's children to come, pertaining to us being 30 plus trillion dollars, our laws being out of order, our courts out of order, our, our jails being full, drugs has imitated our nation, suicides and gun violence has imitated our nation. So you didn't want the stuff that I was teaching and telling you about to be shoved down your throat. So now you got something else being shoved down your throat. Coming near a neighborhood near you. Mr. Smith, Mr. Tony Smith, that works for a major insurance company that had to move to Knoxville, Tennessee, because he realized by reading the Bible that the things that I was teaching and telling about was, in fact, the gospel. You know, I'm going to make mention of this, and then I'm going to let this go, because this this is, it, it tears me up inside. Whenever I first started bringing forth this message, I got hooked up with a family over in Kenton, Tennessee, called the Neals. Leroy Neal, Terry Neal, Kay Neal, Faye Neal, and basically their whole family. I got associated with them for a reason. And the reason why I got associated with them was because they were supposed to have been Bible nuts. They were supposed to be obsessed with the Bible, toward reading the Bible, understanding the Bible, wanting to know more and more about God's precious word. Okay? So I got associated with these people's lives. I started working with them, started working for them, started praying with them, started eating with them, started worshiping with them, started going to church with them. And this went on for almost a, almost a year and a half. Over a year, it went on. Until finally, there towards the last... I realized that I had run into a brick wall in the interpretations that I was interpreting the Bible about versus the interpretations that they was interpreting the Bible about because they kept telling me that, no, the church is already going to be gone. The church is already going to be gone, Juby, whenever, whenever all that bad stuff starts happening to the planet. Uh-huh. Okay. That was in 80... 84, 85, somewhere around in there, maybe 86, whenever whenever I got associated with that group of people over there that was supposed to have been fanatics, in which they was. They was fanatics. They believed in God. They prayed, and they worshiped, and they studied the Bible. But they still hadn't accepted the truth pertaining to where we are today that I started telling them about back then that they was just in total denial of. We ain't going to accept that. Why? Because we're going to already be gone. Well, you've been saying that now, Mr. Neal. Mr. Leroy Neal and Mr. Terry Neal and the rest of the Neal family over there now for 30 some odd years since 1984, 85, 86. Are you gone yet? Are you gone yet? You ain't gone. We're still here. And the suffering has intensified. And the very things that I was teaching them about or trying to convince them about 30 some odd years ago are now manifesting themselves on a day-to-day -day level towards occurring. 
It was people like that that really and truly thought that they was going to be able to stop this from happening. They really and truly felt like that they had the power, the ability of stopping the very will of God because of my life being spared the way that it was spared in 1983, and I went on this, this uh, fact-finding mission with them towards studying the Bible, word for word, chapter for chapter, verse for verse, and when it was all said and done with, I hadn't accomplished no more in a year and a half going on two years than what I had whenever I first got associated with them people's lives. So you know what? I got away from them. Time to play dead. Roll over. Play dead man's bluff. Get away from them. Just like the Word of God says, that if you can't work with these people in convincing them of their inadequacies, shake the dust off your feet and move on, for it would have been better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that group of people <clears throat> that wouldn't render our, our re, our, uh, wouldn't accept support the things that you was teaching and preaching. So we have a little community in Northwest Tennessee in Obion County called Kenton, Tennessee that begins the core of origin where all this began in my particular life. Whenever I made the first telephone call to the White House towards trying to get my foot in the door with this message that I was going to be the one to meet the Antichrist or a form of the Antichrist before the end of time. Since then, I have been persecuted, lied to, demonized, dehumanized. I have lost friends, loved ones, marriages, um, had to declare bankruptcy, many farms, had law enforcement agencies uh, that was solely wanting to mark me as me being some sort of a homegrown terrorist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, regardless whether it was my own people right here in Weekly County or the people up in Kentucky or the people out in Oklahoma. And, and I could just go on and on and on about all this that began with that telephone call. That's where this began. Now, you can sit there and laugh about that. You can mark it off towards it being a coincidence. You can sit there and continue to accuse me of me being crazy or nuts or a liar or whatever. But as we're getting further into this, Mr. Smith, you no longer have to worry about me cramming what I was trying to cram down your, ide down your ideology thoughts pertaining to uh, contradicting uh, this this ideology that had come forth in the Bible Belt area that everybody was going to disappear and, and we wasn't going to be here whenever all these things was occurring to the point that now these things are occurring and now you're experiencing these things. So welcome to the very world that I was teaching you about and telling you about that was soon to come towards a bloody road ahead. And to this day, as far as I'm concerned, the message is still being rejected because they're still rejecting the messenger. As long as they continue to reject the messenger, they're rejecting the message coming from the messenger. Until we see an about face, get ready, because the best is yet to come. And as far as I am concerned, and I say this with all due respect, and sincerity, as far as I am concerned, it could not have happened to a better group of people because they was obviously misled. They was fed into a lie towards believing what they believed 30, 40 years ago that even to this day, they're still not willing to let go of. Even to this day, they're still not willing to acknowledge that they was wrong and I was right. Well, yeah, they can take that to their graves because I'll take what I'm taking to my grave and ultimately whenever we stand in front of the Father during the great white throne judgment, we're going to see who was telling the truth and who wasn't telling the truth, who was trying to help society versus who was cowards and didn't want to help society. We're going to see 
where all this is going to land. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Northwest Tennessee, Western Kentucky, and Oklahoma, we're going to get to the bottom of this. One way or the other. In one place or the other, we're going to get to the bottom of this. You, that's one thing that you can mark on your headstone or my headstone is that one day we're going to know the truth and we're going to get to the bottom of all this. Coming near a neighborhood near you. Turning now to the deadly nightclub shooting in Colorado Springs. Today, the suspected shooter is expected to make their first appearance in court virtually. It comes as we learn much more about the 22-year-old's background. NBC's Maura Barrett has the latest from Colorado Springs, and I'm also joined by Scott McCoy, Interim Deputy Legal Director for LGBTQ Rights and Special Litigation for the Southern Poverty Law Center, and Nathan Williams, a former federal prosecutor who prosecuted the death penalty case against the Charleston church shooter. Maura, first, walk us through the new details we're learning about the suspect and what else we're hearing from that hero, Richard Fierro. Good morning, Lindsay. In a filing overnight in court, the defense attorneys indicated in a mo- But like I said, if David and I would have responded and reacted that way, pretending to these jerks, or if David and I would have decided to have taken our aggression out on the courts towards attacking the judges or the DA, the district attorneys, or, or the uh, uh, Tommy Thomas, or the people that work below Tommy Thomas. We wouldn't have been looked on, on as being heroes. We would have been looked upon as being villains. If we would have attacked any of these people that was attacking us out here on this property to where you can read the reports. I still got them. I'm going to let them be public one day. Don't know when. But I've got every one of the reports pertaining to the incident reports that was written up. I say I got all of them. There may be a, a, a few of them that I don't have, but I got the majority of them that one day I'm going to make public. And it's going to be exposed towards how dereliction of duty was performed right here in the eyes of the people. Not only was the dereliction of duty performed, but it was the inadequacies of the so-called churches that either was to, I, I hate to use the word uh, ignorant, because they're not supposed to be ignorant. Ignorant means you just don't know the truth. But obviously they was convinced of the teachings that I was teaching them that they didn't believe that way. But yet no, every day we get closer and closer to the very things that I had predicted about a bloody road ahead. They didn't want peace. They did not want true, sound, genuine, godly, authentic, jubilation peace that has put us where we are today towards a group of people, a group, not one or two, but a conspiracy, a whole group of people. I'm going to say thousands. As much material as I put out to all these churches in all these different counties, I'm going to go as far as say thousands of people resisted this message coming from the messenger that now, 30 plus years later, I'm beginning to be able to stand in the corner and say, I told you so. I told you so. In other words, I think I got a right to snub my to stub my uh, thumb at what that they have done. And they are the ones that are guilty that has brought this damage to our churches, and to our system that now has jeopardized people's safety and prosperity, not just here in America, but all over the world. Good luck to all of us. Happy Thanksgiving for what it's worth. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your prayers. 
God bless America. God bless America's troops. God bless America's endeavors towards where we go. Father God, I know, Lord, that I'm not perfect. I've made my share of mistakes. But I'm willing to admit to those mistakes. And obviously, I'm dealing with a society here in America that's not willing to admit to theirs. We just pray, God, that for these hardened hearts of these arrogant people, that they will awaken with the message coming from, yes, the messenger myself, because you're the one that gave me this message. And that they will do an about face in recognizing that this message was not my message, but I was only the conduit, the messenger to the message. I just pray, God, that in this Thanksgiving, even though we're going through such a turmoil, some uh, dark time, that you, Lord, will move upon these people and that we will see a revival like they could not even begin to imagine towards turning this around and healing our great land. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your son, Jesus. On this particular Thanksgiving 2022, and thank you, Lord, for all. And amen. Shalom. And may heaven help us all.